What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Uh, welcome back to another episode of Tuffy Talk. And in this episode, we're going double dancing. All right. So we've already we're, we uh, we already did a episode for the men's team dance, and now we're gonna go a little women dancing. So I guess you can call that a two step, right? <laughs> um, for for those that enjoy dancing, uh, your in your lady Wolfpack get a seven seed. So it's a little. Little out of the norm, what we're used to, right? We're used to none of those one, two, or three seeds yeah. here in the last few years. But we got a seven seed. Uh, we got shuffled out to Utah. Um, now, I'm I'm kind of like I'm not mad at the seeding. Um, our first round game will be against Princeton, so we, we got an Ivy League team that we'll be mm-hmm. playing against, um, and a Princeton team that uh, I believe twenty three and five. Um, am I looking at that yep. correctly here? Twenty three yep. and five. Uh, their five losses, um, they lost to Texas. They got blown out by them. Uh, they played UConn close. They only lost by like three or four points to them. Uh, they lost two conference games. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a great opponent. Um, it's an opponent that, uh, look, just based off seeding alone, State should handle them. Um, but uh, And then if we survive advance on that one, obviously the men invented that in 1983, but the women can use that as well, I feel. And uh, if we survive in advance, we play Utah on their home court as they are the two seed. Now, remember, with women's basketball, your top four seeds in each bracket or each region get home home games, um, yeah. and then they pod out. Uh, now, before they used to do it um, differently, but now they only do two sites. Um, they do Greenville 1, Greenville 2, Seattle 1, Seattle 2. So they're, they're not like the men's regions where there's four different locations. And the reason they did that was just kind of just uh, taxing on the travel and just um, just to drum up better ticket sales with some of that reasoning. Right. Um, they want to make sure they maximize their locations and get the most ticket sales that they possibly can, which makes sense for the women's side of the game. Yeah. But, uh, Michael, as we uh, just got this bracket, I mean, it's pretty warm still. They, uh, they, they just released it, finished releasing it about 40 minutes ago. So we're recording this on March 12th. So... Um, haven't had a lot of time to digest it, but uh, any first thoughts on, on anything that you're seeing there, either from NC State or the ACC or anything as a whole? Um, ACC as a whole, uh, obviously, is really strong. Virginia Tech, the, the conference champions, got a one seed. Got a one seed. Great Congrats. for them. Yeah. Um, you've got uh, Notre Dame as a three seed. Honestly, I thought they might get a two seed. Um yeah, some of that might be doing with Miles. Um, yeah, that probably hurts. Not that the, not that the, the the committee always says they don't they do take injury in, into consideration, but usually it's for the positive, not the negative. And I right. almost feel like it's the negative here because, for the most part, they were. And if you look at the way, because again, like we talked on the men's episode, they go straight down. So yeah. if you're number seven in the country, that does seed to a three line. Um, yeah, yeah. So that that, that kind of makes sense, I guess. Right. Um, but yeah, please continue. Yeah, I, I, obviously ACC was really good this year. I mean, where where did the women finish? They finished eighth or ninth. Yeah, the women or state. Yeah, yeah, they finished eighth in the conference, and they're and they're a seven seed in the tournament. So that just yep. goes to show how how if you finish strong eighth in the men's side, you don't make the tournament. Not even close. Yeah, yeah. Right, because state state was the sixth seed. Sixth. And they were the really the well, and they 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 got in ahead of Pitt. So. Mm-hmm. But we, we digress. Um, yeah. If you want any more, go check out the, uh, that episode. Yeah. But uh, um, but the NC State matchup specifically, I, I think it's a winnable matchup for sure. Um, for sure. Um, yeah. You know, obviously the status of Diamond will play a factor here, um, mm-hmm. not only for the matchup against Princeton, but especially against Utah Moving in that forward. second round yeah. if we were to win. Um, mm-hmm. We would definitely need her there against a really tough opponent on their home court. So. We'll yeah. see what happens. Uh, yeah, and that's the one thing, like we just mentioned, like you will have to play them on their home court, mm-hmm. and so they'll have you know the home noise. And again, we kind of talked about the men in the men's episode. The women are going to be out west the whole tournament. Um, if they if they obviously if they start in Utah, and if they do advance to the Sweet Sixteen, they're slated into Seattle three. No. Um, so they'll be no, out on Green, the west coast. Greenville, I believe. Oh wait. What? Okay, well, the one you gave me says Seattle 3. Oh. But but their Twitter said Greenville, so you're right. I think it is Greenville. Are you looking at the complete bracket? It does say yeah. Seattle 3. Oh, but, that's interesting. So I don't know who got it right, the NCAA <laughs> or, or NC State Women's okay. Basketball. Well, so We'll be in one of those locations. We'll be in one of those. It's either Greenville <laughs> or Seattle. 
But I, because you're right, because I looked at the Twitter thing that said it were dancing. I and thought it said so. Greenville. So, yeah. but this one's. I mean, you're reading it too, right? You, you do yeah. see Seattle three, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I, I, I am not really sure then what the what the women are doing, but you gotta get there. So they're either playing. Yeah, you gotta get there first, right? So, but uh, yeah. So we're gonna end up playing. Uh, if we win again, we'll play the Pac-12. Um, probably the champion. I mean, if they're I probably so. a two seed, they're probably a, a Pac-12. Cha- oh no, Stanford. Stanford. Stanford a one seed. Yeah, Stanford usually one, one seed. Yeah. yeah so, so uh, the number two team probably in the Pac-12 um, is who we're gonna end up matching up against. So, um, I, I would be curious that there are four losses. Um, I, I would probably guess probably two of them are going to be against Stanford. <laughs> um, cause I don't think, I think Stanford only lost like one game all year. Um, let me just see if we can pull it up. Um, if you want to pull it up while I talk a little bit more about the ACC, um, yep. we were talking about, uh, how good the ACC was this year. You had Florida state got in, um, with a seven seed and Miami got in as a nine seed. And then Duke, I don't think we mentioned them. They got a three seed. And then that school down the road is a six seed. Mm-hmm. Now, the interesting thing is, is they are a six seed in our same bracket. Again, if what we're looking at is correct. Um, so they are um, the six seed. And then we are, no, wait, I see where we're at. We are in the Greenville two bracket. Okay. Up there at yeah. top is seven. My apologies. I was reading North Carolina, not North Carolina State, and that <laughs> is a cardinal sin. Oh, um, what are you, an uh, ESPN announcer? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yes, it definitely is Greenville 2 that we will be playing in. So we go out west to start off with. Um, by the way, that game is on March 17th, the same day as the same men's as game. The men's, yeah. So we might be double celebrating. We might be double drinking <laughs> for our sorrows away. Or, or we might go one and one. <laughs> yeah. So we don't know. So Saturday or Friday is going to be uh, an interesting day to be St. a Wolfpack Patrick's fan. St. Patrick's Day, to say too. The least. And St. Patrick's Day. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, we don't have a game time yet as of, as of this recording. Yep. Um, the the men's the okay. men's released their times about an hour or so after announcing the bracket. So I'm assuming either sometime I'll tonight see. or first thing tomorrow they'll, they'll announce those game times. But, uh, but they are both playing on Friday. So. Yep. Uh, my apologies um, for that. Did you uh, pull up who Utah lost? Because they are 25-4. and four. Yeah. So, uh, Utah... Well, let's look at Princeton first, since that is our first opponent. Sure. Well, we did kind of <laughs> talk about they, they lost to Texas. Uh, they did get blown out by oh, right. them by, like, 20 points. Yep. Um, and then they, only, they only lost, lost twice two, in conference, yeah. Right. They lost to Columbia, and they lost to Harvard, I believe, yeah. which is probably a cardinal sin for them to lose to their rival. <sighs> Um, so and then, um, but that but that Columbia game wasn't yeah. overtime, and it was close. And then they lost to UConn, I think, it was sixty nine sixty four. So um, a little bit closer than. So I think that's really the only common opponent we have. Um, just looking through their schedule um, was the was the UConn team yep. or game. So. So looking at Utah, undefeated in their non conference, um, four losses are at Colorado, at Stanford, at Arizona. Um, okay. They actually won their home game against Stanford right at the end of the year. Okay. Um, and then lost to Washington State in the, it looks mm. like the opening round of the Pac 12 tournament. Who we beat last year. Yeah. In the so that was a tournament. little bit of an upset there in the Pac 12. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And that might be. Um, they still got a two seed, though, so yeah. that obviously didn't hurt them too much. Yep. Um, I don't think they were going to be vying for a number one seed unless they had beat Stanford again. That would right. probably. Um, but Washington State is a five seed in the tournament, so they're they're not a slouch. Uh, cool. I do not see. There's quick glancing. I don't see Arizona on here, um, mm-hmm. and I don't. They were ranked see, when they. Oh yeah, Arizona's them. number seven seed. Okay. Yeah. In the opposite. Yeah, Arizona's a seven seed, and Colorado's a six seed. So okay. all of their losses are to tournament teams. Yep. So that's not a you know it's that's very that's deserving to shake two a stick seed. At. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm guessing. Um, they probably had a high strength of schedule, high net, probably a lot of quad one, quad twos. So I, uh, yep. yeah, I think that's going to, that's going to, that's a very formidable opponent. Uh, but let's, let's also not like discount state here. Um, again, assuming we get to that game, yep. state had one of the toughest schedules in all of the country. I think they were, mm-hmm. I want to say they were 15th. Sounds I, right. I, I want to say, I want to say at some point it was like 15, 16 strength of schedule. Yeah. 
and then I think we had, I think we had like eight or nine quad one wins. Yeah, out of the whole season. Yeah, um, I mean you had that, and you had a t- two top ten wins. I don't know, you know, yeah, looking at the rankings, d- Iowa, and Notre Dame, Iowa, right? and Notre Dame. Yeah, um, for sure. So yeah, it's almost. It's, and we beat oh. Carolina, which is another tournament team. We beat Miami. That's a tournament team. We beat Duke. No, we lost to Duke both games. Yeah. Um, you know, we split I will, with Notre Dame. The issue with the women's team, you know, I it's not not like the men's where we said they're kind of up and down. Right. But it there's obviously had some in bad injury luck. Um, mm-hmm. you know, losing Jada Boyd, losing Diamond Johnson for a time. Um yep. And we had River Ball ones out for a game or two yeah. with, with her knee. But, um, yeah, uh, the the one thing, the one thing if, you know, we've kind of said if if we can come out and shoot the ball, uh, we will we will be in business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the one thing that we haven't been consistent on this year is the is the shooting from the outside. And then just playing with heart, you know, and, and this is the time of year. And we didn't really talk about it on the men's 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 episode but i mean this is it like there is no tomorrow if you don't win so you have to give everything you have and leave it on the court uh for that uh 40 minutes uh or or you're done i mean and some of these some of these girls and guys that's the end of their college career like they are never putting on a uniform again so if that's not enough motivation for you um i mean you're you're just in the wrong business i guess right yeah yeah, you're only guaranteed that one game. Um, you know, and I think, you know, it's hard to say without being, you know, inside the locker room and stuff, but it does mm-hmm. seem like at times there there hasn't been that motivation there for the right. girls. A little, dis- ha- little disjointing. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 And I, and I don't think it's that they don't get along. I no. just And I think the one thing that we've kind of said, you know, and if you follow us at Tuffy Talk and, you know, we, we try to keep it real but keep – a positive spin on everything is we've lacked that leadership and and this is the time of year where you need that leadership Mm -hmm. to someone say you know what get on my back we're not going to lose this game we're going to find a way yeah and that's kind of the one thing that's been lacking it feels like at times um we've got really good players i mean they're yeah as as much talent as there ever has been yeah, it, it, it's just that it's that mindset. It's that mm-hmm. that killer instinct, if you will, where I'm not going to let you lose this game. Like, trust me. Like, get 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 on my back, and I will carry you to the promised land. Yeah, and I, that's not look in hindsight. I don't think it's that surprising. Looking at what we lost from the last two or three years, for sure. For sure. Um, you just kind of assumed. You know the Jada Boys and the Jaquie Brown Turners would step up into that role. Camille Hobbies and yeah. Camille Hobby, um, you know. But sometimes it's it's not always that easy. It is um, right. You know. So some people are just very good at what they do, and then some people are just natural leaders. You know. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing there's nothing wrong with not being a leader. You can go out and do your job and do it really well. Yeah. Um, but in order to be a, a very fluid cog, you need somebody that's gonna be like, hey, when the times are good. I'm here with you, and the times are bad. You can trust me. I will get you out of it. And I just don't at – least, at least I'm sure there are leaders. They're just not maybe the vocal leaders that we're so used to seeing with, like, the Cunanes and the Reina yeah. Perez's and the Kai Crutchfields. Like, you could see the fire, and I don't always see that fire with this team. Um, and, again, that's not to say that they're not passionate for what they're doing. It's just we as fans only can see what we see – out in the public light like we're not there at practices we're not there in the locker room we're not so all the chance that we get to see that is in games um or in or in interviews and we just don't see that with this squad um i don't know again postseason maybe that maybe maybe that's what brings it out in this team and and they go on a run because they can they can beat some of the best teams now do i think this is a national championship team look it's it's South Carolina and everybody else, I, they, they, you know, we can compete. Um, and, and if you catch a team, you can beat them. But honestly, I don't. Did South Carolina lose any games last year? Because if not, I think they might be like two years in a row without losing a game. Like I'm trying I to think remember. if South Carolina lost a game. Like, but certainly 32 but, and 0 this year. Yeah, for sure. And 
Um, and then the games that they played, like, high, like, level matchups, they destroyed their opponent. Like, it it kind of reminds me of that UNLV, UNLV team back in the 90s, man. Like, they just – any team you put in front of them, they were just going to annihilate. It just, it just didn't yeah, matter. They've, they've um, completely dominated the sport the last couple of years. Yeah. But um, just looking at, at the bracket, you know, uh, I, I, I see this team – again, we've talked about it. On our episodes, this is a team that can make a sweet 16 run, maybe even in lead eight. It's also a team that could lose in the first round. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the first time we've really ever said that. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Do you kind of agree with that? Or do you think, no, we'll get past at least the first round and then at that point we're playing with house money? Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress Up Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. I think if if Diamond plays, I think we get past the first round. But without right. her, it becomes a lot trickier it um, does it does and we don't even know like obviously coach moore said that that his goal was to get her right for the tournament now the nice thing is we play on friday so that's an extra day yep, right so that's true not that i think she's one day off like i don't know if thursday versus friday matters but there is something now the one thing i will say too is salt lake city's got some elevation and, and we didn't yeah. even talk about that on the men's game or the men's side either yeah um playing that elevation gonna be interesting um so uh i'm curious to see if they travel out even like a day earlier just to kind of get yeah. acclimated to that i think um, that would be smart yeah i don't know i don't know how that works like i don't know i'm sure there's some kind of ncaa rules that how say early, you can travel yeah. when early and whatever but that is something to keep an eye on uh as we go through this tournament um and then we'll make sure that we definitely talk about that on the live stream because that was something that just kind of came across my mind yeah um but uh yeah, I I don't know. What do you? What is the? I, I guess I'll ask you this way: What is the floor and what is the ceiling for this for this team? Now that you now that we have a bracket in front of us. Yeah, I mean, I think floor is absolutely losing in the first round. Um, you know, getting past Utah that will especially be tough in the second round, and then mm-hmm. potentially you got yeah, Sweet Sixteen matchup. You're looking at um, LSU would be the three LSU, seed. Yeah. LSU is tough. Yeah. I yeah. I don't know. I I probably say Sweet Sixteen is as the ceiling. I, I, I think so with this with this team. Yeah, not to say that we again. I mean, that's probably know, teams, where it is on the men's updates. side too, as well. So I I, I, I I feel like you're you're correct in that mm-hmm. that uh, assessment on both sides of the yeah. of the of the house, which is good. Um, uh, I mean, Sweet Sixteen, especially for respectable, the, especially for the men's. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think. You know, looking back on it at the beginning of the year, if you said Sweet 16 for the women, that would be disappointing. With the way the season's gone and it's going, and you said they at least made it to the Sweet 16, I think that would be that would be a put a good good ending to a rough season there. Yeah, yeah. I my counter to that would be we didn't know what we had in all these transfers that we had coming in, right? Like how they yeah. were going to mesh. Um, now, obviously, they were very well regarded, um, but then you had to see what other folks were going to do stepping up into bigger roles. Yeah. So there, I would say there was a lot more. And again, we don't want to cross pollinate episodes, but I would say that the women had more questions than the men. As weird as that sounds, because the men yeah. were so bad last year, you <laughs> only thought fair. they were going to go up. That's fair. So that's fair. Um, and again, but there's, that's the way college sports is going to be every year. Now there's going to be so many unknowns, so many moving parts, guys and girls coming in and out of programs. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you got transfer classes, you got freshmen, like how are they going to be brought in and what kind of roles are these teams going to be? Um, so like college, like it's just different now. So every year um, it's, you know, you can't really look at it. You know, you used to be able to look at it, you know, three to four year windows and and now it's every year is different. Yeah, and that was only three, four years ago that right. that was like that. Right. It's it's 
the game has just changed with the NIL and the transfer rule, the transfer portal rules. Um, so just, I guess what I'm trying to say is enjoy your teams every year for what you have because you don't know what it's going to look like next year. Yep. Now you have ideas, but until you start getting out and playing the games, it's like, oh, this is not what I thought we were going to be like. or, or In a good hey, way or a bad way. way. <laughs> correct. Yeah. Correct. So, um so I guess we'll wrap it this way. I uh, I, I also think that our 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 ceiling is the Sweet Sixteen, unfortunately. Um, and again, it's just it's not that we don't want our teams to go further. Um, we again we try to say this that, that we are NC State five fans that are very loyal and passionate about our teams, but we also try to be realist. Other than Kenzie, we love you, girl. Like Kenz is natty's all the way. Um, and I, I and think I love she her believes for it. it though. So. Yeah. Oh, she totally believes that. Yeah. No, that's not like, that's not some kind of crazy talk. Like that, no, she no, wholeheartedly no. believes that in her heart, and and every fan base needs that, right? Absolutely. Um, but every fan base needs the realist too. <laughs> so, uh, I I will be cheering on these women so hard. Uh, I, I I I traveled with them last year. I went to Raleigh, did those games. I went to Connecticut and did those games, and it was some of the most fun I've ever had as an NC State fan. So. Uh, if you ever have a chance to go like to see the women play, especially in the tournament, the tournament's just a different beast. And yeah. I kind of, I'll kind of talk about it this way: you meet so many passionate fans. Like state, and every fan base has passionate fans, but the folks that go travel to these sites to these tournaments, uh, it's a different kind of breed of fan. Yeah, uh, we've absolutely. met wonderful people over the years traveling to Omaha and uh, Connecticut and. Uh, Louisville and just some of the places where I've gone on tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, so if you ever have the opportunity, go do it. Uh, you won't regret it. Um, uh, Pittsburgh was another one I was trying to think of, not Louisville, but Pittsburgh when we had our run a couple years ago. These are stories that I have and that I will share with my grandkids um, and friends. It's the best time. And um, so if you have that ability, go do it, is what I'm trying to get at. So, yeah. Um, so we did it on the men's side. Yeah, I was going to say, do you want to do a Final Four? Yeah. You go first. Oh, you go first? You want me to go first? Okay. All right. So let's look at this. Um, Yeah, South Carolina out of the Greenville 1 bracket. That's weird to say Greenville 1 bracket. Yeah. Uh, Two, I'm sorry, uh, we'll go uh, go Greenville 2. We'll go left to right on the bracket. Uh, Indiana's the one on there. Uh, I like LSU. Um, Actually, who's the two seed in that side? Utah. Utah. Oh, right. Utah. So that, that's our bracket. Yeah. Yeah, I think Louisville. I mean, sorry, I think LSU, uh, which is actually, speaking of Louisville, they did not make the tournament from what I'm looking at. Oh, um, I, I didn't, didn't even realize that. That is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they did. Um, no, they did. They did. They, did. they did? They were five what seed. Were they, what was, oh, they were five seed. Five well, seed. That's kind of high for them. In, um, I was going to say, I think they, I was like, I know they didn't have a great year, but they were better, better. But it was interesting. They were they were they really weren't in the top twenty five at all, and they got a five seed. So I mean, you would think they're five the top seed 22. over there on Duke's side of the bracket. Okay, so you got a five and a three on that side then. Yeah. Um, okay, so back to Greenville too. I think that's going to be LSU. Um, I just think that the competition level they play is much better than Utah. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate to give the SEC bias here, but <laughs> it's yeah. true. Yeah. Like the SEC yes. plays, especially women's basketball. They mm-hmm. play they play really good women's basketball. Um, Seattle three. Let's see who's the two seed. UConn. There's no way I'm taking UConn. <laughs> um, Virginia Tech. Like I love Elizabeth Keatley. I think she's a great player. And like I said earlier, I think before we recorded this, I like Kenny Brooks. Um, heart over heart. Uh, who's the three in that one? Ohio State. Ohio State. Ooh, they're a good team. They're a really good team. Ah. Uh, you know what? Let me take Virginia Tech. I, yeah. I want to give some love to the ACC. Um, I, I think Ohio State could make some noise in that bracket, though. Yeah. I, I don't think UConn is the same UConn team uh, that they've been in the past years. Obviously, they have Becker. She's injured, and Fudd has been injured. I, don't, I think she's back, but um, yeah. I don't think that's as good a UConn team as they typically are. So I do like anyone. If you had to give me UConn or the field, I'd definitely take the field in that bracket. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll stick with Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then oh, good, good on East Carolina. They made the they made the tournament there. Eight thirteen. Um, I know. Um, Stanford. Who's the two? Iowa. Man, if our girl is shooting the lights out, Caitlin. Uh, what is it, Caitlin? Caitlin uh, Clark. 
Clayton Clark, thank you. If she's shooting the lights out, uh, that's a good program. But yeah, we beat them. Six she scored 40 something points and we still beat them. For sure, right? So, um, and the, here's the thing about the women's game the top one, two, it's much realistically. Top, yeah, yeah, much more top. Correct. Right. Correct. So, like, picking chalk on the women's side isn't isn't as a big a leap as it is picking yeah. it on the men's side. Right. But, um, like, I think you get maybe a third of the upsets that you do on the men's mm-hmm. side. Um, there's usually not a lot of upsets. But uh, I'll, I'll take Stanford. Uh, I think they're really they – I mean, look at the number one and two seeds each have five-plus losses. Yeah. Like, that's – that's a, that's that's a good enough that's a good amount but uh i think stanford okay. and then I, I think south carolina and i think south carolina cuts down the nets again it's yeah it's kind of boring to say it but i, I think that's <laughs> what it's going to be but yeah uh, what, what, what are your thoughts i got there? south carolina obviously greenville one greenville two yeah. our bracket i'll go i'll go lsu as well i do mm-hmm. like them um yeah their coach is a little crazy she but she's, she's she good coach. coach yeah but she's a good coach she yeah. came from baylor yeah. and she knows how to coach yeah i agree seattle three uh you went virginia tech i'm gonna go yukon i it's all right i don't know it's hard to hard to pick against I, them it, it is but the nice thing is that that's in seattle and not in in, in hartford or stores or True. uh or uh Wherever bridgeport was, where we yeah. were at last year yeah so and so they won't have that home court cooking like they did against us. But yeah. go ahead, Seattle four. Who do you got? And then I'll I'll go Stanford as well. And then yeah. kind of same thing with you. Probably South yeah. Carolina. If it was South Carolina over UConn again, I would not be surprised at all. Yeah, and it's one of those things too where if you gave me the field or South Carolina, I'm still taking South Carolina. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's not even close. Right. It's it's just not. It's the, crazy. Um, Don Staley has built an empire down there, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it's. It's impressive what she's done, yep. and uh, you can hate on it all you want, but she's getting it done. Thirty-two so. and zero. Mm. Yeah, but I will say that in the last four or five years, the landscape of women's basketball has gotten much better. Um, it used to be one or two programs, and right. now you have maybe a handful of programs. Yeah. So I mean, and that's progress, I, I will say. So, but uh, that'll wrap this episode up. But uh, just a recap, real quick: State will open up the tournament. In Salt Lake City against Princeton, uh, we are coming in as the seventh seed, and we will be playing the tenth seed. That game is also on Friday. Uh, uh, it'll be on the ESPN network of platforms, so probably ESPN the the Dose or um, it'll be <laughs> on. Those? It'll get it'll get buried, but uh, so it'll probably be a streaming thing. So just be prepared for that uh, for viewership. Um, it's not like the uh, not like the men's tournament where they have forty different channels, but it'll yeah. be it'll probably be streaming. But uh, and again, we don't have a game time. Uh, with it being Salt Lake City, I'm guessing evening, probably uh, sometime after five or six o'clock. Um, I'm hoping it's after the men's game. Yeah, and it's then if we survive in advance, at we'll, the same time, <laughs> um, <laughs> it would make life miserable <laughs> to say the least. But uh, no, I I think that's probably gonna be like a six or seven o'clock game. Probably. So I'm hoping one will end and the other will yeah. kick kick off. But uh. And if we survive in advance, we'll play Utah uh, on Sunday. Right. Because we play Friday and Sunday yep. on that side of the bracket. So, all right, Wolfpack Nation, that'll do it. Again, as always, if you, uh, you know, you need to be following us on Twitter, we'll be having lots more information breaking out as the week comes out. We'll be dropping some stats. Uh, follow Michael. He's always dropping some <laughs> stats out there. Uh, I, I enjoy his uh, his numbers game he's got a lot more time and patience with it than i do yep. <laughs> um so but um if you're not following us on twitter make sure you do it tough you talk now again make sure you follow us on here on youtube or any of the podcasts where you get your podcast at and if you're on youtube make sure you like subscribe and turn on that bell for all those great notifications especially when we go live uh, and who knows you know we might be doing a watch party for this we you we know if if there's enough interest, we might just do a watch party. So, But anyway, stay tuned for all of that. Again, you can get all that information on our Twitter page. And as always, Wolfpack Nation, you already know. Let's go pack NCAA dancing style. We'll see you soon.